Hey everybody, hope you guys are having a great day. So today what we're talking about is the pros and cons of living in a 55 plus community. It's interesting because I'm now I'm 56 years old and me and my wife were talking, we're like, hey, do you want to move to the villages? Do you want to move to a 55 plus community? And for us, after we weighed the pros and cons, that's why I did this video with Bill because I did a lot of research into it and decided it wasn't for me, but it might be a perfect place for you. If you guys could do me a favor and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and hit the bell notification so you get notified next time I place a video, I upload a video. Greatly appreciate it. So let's get started. All right, Bill, let's start off with you. Give me a pro about living in a 55 plus community. It could be both. Uh which obviously it's gonna be age specific requirements. So at least one member of the household being 55 years of age. Um, you know, a pro would be typically, you're not gonna have any younger families living in the 55 and up community because that's, that's kind of the point that everybody's in that same life stage, if you will. So, um, so basically, you're not gonna have a bunch of kids running around. I mean, kids still go there and visit, but, but there's a limit on you know how long they can stay. Correct. So you can go and visit. You can spend the night. Um, you know, that's all spelled out in the you know deed restrictions, covenants, things of that nature. But um, usually, you'll start to see now where no. We get a lot of questions also where it's you know one person is 55 and one person is 54. Right. Can they still live there? And that answer is yes. Yeah, I know. I, I just ran into that. I did an inspection on a 55 and older community, and the gentleman was 56, his wife was 54, and they're moving in, no problem. Yep, no problems at all. Yep. Can you be an owner and not be 55? Yes. Shouldn't be an issue unless there's some sort of a covenant or a restriction to it. However, you just can't ever live there. Somebody else that's 55 would have to actually be the permanent resident there so they also don't allow you know uh, they call it uh, 21 is kind of the age yeah. for people living full-time there for that secondary person oh okay so they have to be older than 21 correct for yeah. a secondary person yep. okay so that's pretty cool all right, everybody. All right, everybody. When you start your new take, it's all right. I, I'm like, oh, there's a take. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's a take. So here's a con, all right, with uh, <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I don't know why I keep doing that, but I hey, keep saying Hey, it's your it. thing. You got to go with it now. Yeah, so <laughs> extended family or family members, say, mm -hmm. say there's an emergency and somebody has to live with you and you live in a 55 and older community and they need to stay with you long term. It could be a health problem. It could be your grandchildren just have no place to live. And they're restricted because I know a couple of them, it's like, I think the limit was like three weeks. Mm -hmm. And then they have to move out for a certain period of time before they come back. Yeah. What's, what's the rules with that? Because that's crazy. They do vary. And that's something you have to take into consideration that that may be a serious possibility that you cannot stay there long term because that's the rules that's the point however like i said you have to review all your deed restrictions and covenants prior to closing your sale to make sure that you can do that and a lot of times it's spelled out in those restrictions and they vary by community so you have to really you know do your diligence and read all those documents yeah because for you it might be perfect but if you think that one of your grandchildren or even your children are going to have to live with you Maybe it's not for you. I find that one of the cons about living in a 55 plus community, you're restricted on who could live with you. Right, and remember I did say typically, you know, somebody that's 21 or older. But do, you, do, you have to be ma do, but do they have to be married to each other? It just, uh, the, it just says that somebody 21 or older. So a lot of times these communities, you know, they have, they have statutorial guidelines, but again, I said guidelines, so right. you have to check to see what they did. There's some communities that don't allow pickup trucks. Really? Yeah, so you have to watch those restrictions. Right. And really, really read through, literally not commercial vehicles, a pickup truck. Okay, no, that's good to know. Okay, Bill, give me another one. 
All right. A positive one. A positive. Can't live in a 55 up community without having activities. They are known for their activities. They've got the social clubs, depending on the community. You know, they've got the, the car, all the card games you could think of, swim classes, group meetings. Uh, one of the communities actually has a woodworking club. They've got all kinds of different things. So when you're searching for your 55 and up, you know, active lifestyle community, see what they offer. See what the community offers for the association. And a lot of times they'll have an activity director. So they're filling up every single day with something to do. That's smart. Fitness yeah. class. I mean, they actually, they, you're right, because yeah. I did a couple of inspections on uh, 55 old communities and they were having shuttle boards. They, they, they seem like they were having a good old time. <laughs> and I keep seeing them at other people's houses, sitting on the front porch, yeah. sit, sitting in the lanai, having a good old time, yep. having a drink. I showed a couple houses over in Sanford at one of the new um, planned development communities that is going up over there. And right now the 55 and up was the uh, staple that they started with, the, yeah. uh, the foothold there. And I'm gonna tell you, when I took my clients through there, I wanna move there. I'm trying to figure out how I can do it. Because it seems like they're having a good old they, time. They had, they had the, the activity room. Yeah. They had a restaurant. Oh, really? They had a restaurant. They had a bar. It was amazing. They have really set that community up uh, to keep you pretty much in the community. There was a Publix going in. It was really its own little world out there in uh, Sanford. It yeah. was great. Yeah, like the one I did over there, it's like, what do you do? He's like, well, you know, we have a little a board we put up for what we're interested in. And I'm interested in fishing, just like you, he says. And 10 other people said, got together and got in touch with me and they're like yeah we got a little group here and we we do these fishing trips we go down to tarpon we go to two georges every other week <laughs> that's and, awesome and we go fishing together you know and there's a group that loves golfing and there's a group right. that loves whatever the women whatever they love you know bicycling it doesn't matter it Good seems time. like they're not bored it seems like there's plenty of activities yeah they it definitely have got a lot of them have nature paths things like tennis mm -hmm. uh, pickleball yeah. You know, um, any of the uh, shuffleboard. Yeah, there's, there's tons to do. Tons of stuff, yeah. tons of stuff to do. Yeah. One of the things I've noticed with doing inspections, again, I'm not a realtor, you're the realtor, but doing inspections in a 55 and older community, I found that the, the houses are a little bit more expensive than a non 55 plus community. And if that's the case, I find that a big con because most of the people that are retiring are on a fixed income. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could shed some light on that? Yeah, so very, very specific to each community. Because some communities, the houses are lower, but the HOA fee might be higher. Okay. Or like if it's a 55 and up um, condo. Mm -hmm. Same thing, they still have activities, they still have stuff to do. So let's just stay on the, like a neighborhood community, single family home type uh, living. Right. So sometimes that HOA, obviously they're covering the activities, the activity director, things like that, stuff that you would normally have to seek outside of the community is all right there, brought right there with you. Right. Sometimes they'll have, like uh, over here in Trinity, yep. one of the communities, they've got metal roofs. So you have a 50 year roof, so it's not something you have to worry about. Sure. So okay. the home might be a little more expensive on the front end, but you also have a lot of things that are maintenance issues that you're not gonna have to deal with for a long time. So oh. it's just a, you know, you gotta weigh your checks and balances and apples for apples and oranges for oranges. Yeah, that's good to know. Yep, and they sometimes the HOA also covers in those communities. You're not having to worry about mowing your lawn. You're not having to worry about trimming your bushes. Yeah. If a bush dies, somebody's going to be there to fix it for you. You just write a letter and then they show up. Your sprinklers break. Somebody shows up and fixes your sprinklers. So when you start to put all those little expenses together, is it so it's I, not that expensive, really? So that's one of the benefits, I guess, of a 55 and older community. So yep. you, you turn a negative, the higher cost of a house, into a benefit because 
in the long run, it might actually be cheaper. Correct. That's interesting. Yep. All right, said again. <laughs> All right. I got, I got a negative. I got, I got a con. I found, again, I didn't dive into it too much, but I found that 55 and older communities have some restrictions on what you could do with your property. You know, mm -hmm. what, like you said before, pickup truck, you know, or where you park your golf cart, but maybe it's too much. Maybe it's better to live in a non-restrictive community, but maybe I'm wrong. What's your opinion on the restrictions on a 55 and older community? Sure, the restrictions are there to maintain everybody's property values. That's in the aesthetics of the community, the common areas of the community that everybody gets to enjoy. Again, the whole point of it is for you to have activities close to your house. The ease of activities close to your house. Socializing with your neighborhood, building right. bonds, having okay. friends, things of that nature, versus joining a club outside of the neighborhood. You have the club right inside your neighborhood. And these communities are generally, especially the newer ones, they're huge. Yeah. They've got ones that are very specific to golf, things of that nature. So yes, deed restrictions can be kind of a pain, but again, if it's in a community where you don't have to worry about anything, there's really not much for you to worry about when it comes to deed restrictions because the community replaces the plants, you know, yeah. those kind of things. So like if you go out, there's a uh, community in Wesley Chapel, same thing. They cover all the plants, they cover everything. You don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. And so that would be kind of a positive flip side of that. You do have or run the chance of, let's say they don't cover those kind of options and right. you have to maintain your lawn. So you've got to find your own lawn person. You've got to find your own sprinkler person. You got to find your person to paint your house, yep. fix your roof, all the stuff that comes along with home ownership, which is yeah. all fantastic, but it's your responsibility. And yeah. that HOA can force you to paint your house. All right. They also tell you, yes, you can plant this type of plant or no, you can't do this, you can't do that, and you can do this and you can do that. You have to submit plans and go through a approval process. So, so there's benefits to it and there's disadvantages to it. Correct. If you don't want to have those kind of hassles, then maybe a 55 and up community, or just even a community in general, that has those kind of restrictions isn't necessarily for you versus one that's an all-inclusive where you don't have to even think about it anymore. Right. All right. Something to consider. By the way, if you guys think about doing 55 older communities or you have opinions on it, do me a favor, comment below and I'll get back to them because I want to see what you guys think about 55 and older communities also. Okay, so in closing, is a 55 and older community good for me? Not at this point in my life. Is it good for you? It might be. Do your research, go visit them, talk to the people that live there. You never know. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. Most of the time, those communities are gonna have their uh, restrictions on their community website. If they can't, you're working with a realtor that can help you you know, get that information so that you can make an informed decision. But like I said, most of them have a community website where you can kind of explore it and see it. Drive around, take a look at things, see what you like, see what you don't like. Yeah, Just, because they're not all the same. Exactly. There's so many different things and while there's certain things that may be important to you on one hand, there's others that are no big deal to you and you've got to make those decisions yourself. Right. Totally agree. Anyways, people, this is the video for today. Again, please do me a favor, subscribe and hit the bell notification. I'm trying to get the sus subscriber count up and I need your help to do it. I greatly appreciate it and I'll talk to you in the next video. Thank you. Thank you.